I, this was a something I, a revelation had years ago, like as a worship pastor. There's two kinds of people in life, refreshers and drainers. And there are people who refresh you, but mm-hmm. oftentimes people in ministry spend most of their time around people who kind of drain you. Mm-hmm. And that's not in a bad way. That's not a pejorative. But there are people who they have needs. They, they, they need something. They want something. They're, mm-hmm. And so you are in a position as a pastor, perhaps, of... You're giving, you're giving, you're pouring out, you're giving emotionally and spiritually, and you've got to find ways to spend some time with some refreshers, Mm. people who you can uh, let your guard down around. You don't have to be on, if you will. And that's so critical. So I would ask anyone listening to like pause this and and write down, ask ask yourself, who are the refreshers in my life? Who, who are those people I can go and exhale and be completely myself or express some anger or, or vent a little bit and just say, I'm, I'm kind of sad lately or I'm, mm-hmm. I'm really discouraged. Or, I'm, I, I really feel lonely. Isn't that weird? I'm surrounded by people, but I just feel kind of a little depressed and that's really not like me usually. And, and whatever that thing is you're feeling, can you name two or three people in your life that you can be that real with? That's so critical. Mm. I want to just want to like pause for 30 seconds and not even say anything. But we need, we need one another. We need connection. We can't do this. And it's not enough to just have Facebook friends or Instagram. Those aren't real. That's, they don't really know the real you. Mm. You've got to have flesh and blood, Jesus with skin on. Mm. You ever heard that expression? Yeah. Yeah. So I just pray everyone right now, Go ahead, write down. And if and if you find it difficult to name two or three refreshers, then this is your assignment this week is to pray, God, Lord, open my eyes to people in my past, in my present, in my community that I, I need that kind of a relationship. I need someone. And maybe it's an older woman. If you're, maybe you're a young woman in your 20s and maybe it's, it's an older woman woman in your church that you don't know very well, but you respect their walk in the Lord, seek them out and take the initiative and say, excuse me, I don't want to be a a burden to you, but I feel like there's things in your life that I need. I feel like I need someone like you to, that I'd love to have tea with occasionally or coffee. And would you be open to that? You know, and same with young men listening, you know, see, take the initiative, even though it would be ideal. And if there's any older men, take the initiative this is what I felt like, wow. I felt like the Lord said to me when we moved to New York, because um, it was definitely like a transition. It was the end of an era, 25 years, you know, same church, same, doing the same work. And it was definitely, okay, now we're tra- we're passing that off to the next generation. We're transitioning. We're going to move into a 900 square foot apartment in New York City. And I was going to do this, and I was going to do this, and I had plans to do this. And I felt like after six months, a lot of that just kind of wasn't working out like I thought it might. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I just felt like the Lord's, I was like praying, God, what do I, what do I do here? And, uh, anyway, I don't know why it's so emotional, but I felt like the two words he said to me was, Paul, be available. That's what I want. That's all I want from you, Paul. Be available to others in the city, to young leaders, to peer, you know, peers and, and especially next generation as I'm, you know, in my 50s now. It's like be available. Let people into your life. Let some of these young guys into your life, into your life. 